Hi everyone, Rachel here from RachelTheStamper.com, and my focus this past week is kind of in a masking focus. So what I did first was I did masking with masking paper. This is a paper that has a um, backing that you can take off. You can fussy cut this. And for this instance, what we did was we stamped the meerkats, fussy cut them, put them down with the um, masking paper. We did our background and then peeled it off and finished those. So that's an easy way. That's one way to do it. Um, another way to do it is with using masking fluid or it's called drawing gum. And essentially what you do for this is you stamp the image. So we stamp, for example, the turtle. We painted it over with the drawing gum. You do the background and then you erase this with, and do I have my little thing? With an adhesive you pull it off with an adhesive remover and we did this for actually three different images so if you missed that video you can go back and watch it but we did one with the meerkats one with the turtle and we did one with the uh, kanga and kanga and the koala so those are pretty fun as well. Nice, cool way to do something different. Now, while we were doing this second round, so this was the most recent video, what I did was I also told you that you can do this on watercolor paper if you wanted to instead. So I have two images that we did the other day. So basically we painted these on. So if you want to see how to do that, just go ahead and back and watch that video. I will do my best to put a link um, in the description here on YouTube, but not 100% sure if I can do that yet. But you are going to watercolor on these and I actually did two different images because I used the smooth side of the watercolor paper for one. So this one, the smaller is the smooth. And then the larger side, I actually used the bumpier side of the paper. So I'm going to show you how to finish these two today. Now, I have been meaning to use this for some time, but I've not gotten around to it. So just in case maybe I seem like I don't know what I'm doing, it could be because I haven't done it before. So I do have a... Um, a cloth, a microfiber cloth handy. I do have two aqua painters filled with water. I normally fill these with alcohol, but I filled them with water. But you do want to remember when you're using these, when you're finished with them, to empty them out so they don't get that kind of stinky water smell. Um, a couple other things I have handy just in case. So for this stamp set, or this image, I should say, we used Do the Impossible, which is in the new Occasions catalog. Uh, the other one we used were the Gangs All Mirror. And this is a celebration item. And then back on your feet was the turtle. And he is in the um, the big annual catalog. So three cool stamp sets that I've been wanting to use more of. Now, one thing I do want to tell you, just getting, I don't want to get too ahead of myself. So I'm going to try to kind of pace myself, even though this is a pre-recorded video. But what I'm going to do is for these, just kind of for the simplicity of keeping them um, flat. I'm going to actually just tape them down and I'm just going to tape them down to the little board here that I'm working with which is my tonic easy clean mat just to kind of keep them so they stay really nice and um, flat and they don't get all funky with the watercolor and what I'm going to do now you can do this a couple different ways but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to heat set these with my heat tool but you can totally let these dry on their own and they do have a different appearance when you let them dry versus when you do the heat tool. So kind of keep that in mind. I am putting about a quarter inch ish and I say ish because this one I can see is not straight. But just for the sake of time, I'm not going to make it take forever. So if you do let these dry on their own, they will have a different appearance. I'm going to try to keep that one slightly square. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do these two different ways. So with the smoother um, the smoother side of the watercolor paper, and this is Strathmore watercolor paper. It's the paper I prefer to use. I'm not going to use quite as much water, but when I use the bumpier side, I am going to use a little bit more water, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of pick out two colors that I think will look nice. So I'm going to do Call Me Clover. I'm just going to give that a squeeze just to make a little puddle there. And then what I'm going to do is clean, make sure I clean my aqua painter because I use them for goodness knows what. So I'm going to clean my aqua painter and I'm going to drop a little bit of water in to kind of make a more liquidy solution. So that will be for one. And then for the other one, I was going to say, you know, maybe we'll do three. We'll do three colors. So I'm going to do blueberry bushel as well. And you can use the same aqua painter, but these have a little bit different of a tip. This one is a little bit bigger, and the other one is a little bit um, more narrow, so I'm going to use that. And I'm going to use yellow, just because I think those three colors together might be kind of fun. So I'm going to go ahead and grab pineapple punch. So what I'm going to do, typically you probably want to want to start with your lighter color, but since I already have this one inked up, I'm going to start with the Call Me Clover. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring this in on the watercolor paper, 
make sure my brush is nice and wet you can kind of roll it around and I'm just gonna kind of drag in some stuff in the background kind of as if they were running and maybe there's some grass kind of behind them so maybe I might not use yellow after all I'll have to see um, if you want a little bit more of a deep color just kind of pick it and you can drop it in now one other thing if you're using this and you have this taped to a hard board the kind of nice thing about it is you can lift it up and let the water move around so you can let gravity help you to create which is kind of fun so we're gonna just do that all right then I'm gonna clean off my brush just like so. I'm going to go ahead and close this up. The water will eventually evaporate, but if it bothers you, you can certainly wipe it out with a paper towel. Now, right here, where we have our water edge, right above that, it is technically dry, okay, because there is no water there. So the nice part about if you're using a hard board, you can turn this around. So that kind of makes it nice. So if you don't have one, they're not very expensive. I actually got a bunch of them on Amazon to be able to use for my classes. So they're really not terrifically expensive. You can probably buy them at an art store as well. Now, if you're worried about the colors muddying or muddling, you would want to let it dry, but we don't have time for that because I don't want to make you suffer through it. So I'm just going to kind of fill in the color trying to stay away from the edge of the green there if I can help it so I'm going to just bring this in here in the background and if there's spots where I kind of want to let it fade a little bit lighter I'm not going to ink up quite as much so you can see it's a lot more faded up at the top versus down here at the bottom when I first brought my color in and I'm going to bring a little bit more color in so it's a little bit deeper here at the bottom again Again, touching the edge of the green now that it's dry, it is going to blend a little bit, so you're going to get more of a yellow-green look. Now that I'm done here, hopefully. It's really, really windy here today. I'm hoping while I'm filming this, the power isn't going to go out. That would really stink. Okay, so just a little bit more. And again, you will see kind of here at the edge that the colors, once they meet, will bleed a little bit, which is okay if you're okay with that. So no worries. So I'm going to just close up my yellow. And then finally, I'm going to just add the blue. And the blue can kind of be like what they're running on. So I'm going to do the same thing. And I know I had a different brush here picked up, but we're just going to clean this one off. I'll just stick with my same one brush. I'll use that one for the other one. And then I'm going to bring in kind of at the bottom. So same thing again. I'm just bringing in, letting it be a little bit lighter at the bottom. Pick up a little bit more color. And if you add your color back in where you've already touched, it will move a little bit. So for example, if you wanted to be a little bit darker at the bottom, you just kind of bring, bring this in and kind of tap at the bottom and it will fill in the space. You don't have to do that. It doesn't even fully need to be like 100% colored. So don't feel like you have to make it so it's a certain way. I'm just going to kind of blend them together. I'm going to wipe off my brush here and I'm going to pick up a little bit more blue and kind of bring it to the edge. And what will happen is the wherever the water goes is kind of where your color will go go it kind of moves so color is especially when you have water with it it is very fluid so without lifting this up I'm going to do my best because you're probably not really supposed to heat these mats up but I'm going to go ahead and hit this a little bit with my heat tool I'm going to turn it on high make sure it's nice and hot and then I'm going to just move it around again the other thing you could do is you could use um, paper towels to kind of sop up some of the water you could let it dry naturally and see what becomes of it. You can see it's heating just a little bit. It's moving the mat, so I don't want to hold it too still. Also, I don't really know how much you want to heat that um, masking fluid that we've used. So just kind of keep it moving, and it definitely lightens up significantly, okay? So if for some reason, that's pretty dry, if for some reason at this point, say you wanted to add like another level of dark, I'm just going to show it to you what you what you could do if you wanted to. So you make sure your brush is clean again, and then you can pick up some more color because now this is dry, and you can kind of lay in a little bit of darker shade if you wanted to. Kind of just going to bring this along the edge of the sidewalk they're running on. <clears throat> or pavement, whatever it is. So there's that. 
clean off my brush and I'm going to do it again just a little bit with the green but I'm going to do it a little bit more at the top you can kind of make this look a little bit more like a grass edge if you wanted to bring it in so it's got a little bit nicer of a color kind of whatever you want remember this is art so it is in the eye of the beholder and don't be too hard on yourself because sometimes I know that's people are their own worst critics so I'm just going to heat it once more just feeling it to make sure it's pretty much dry all right and then one thing you want to do when you're finished with it is you want to remove it and attempt to remove it kind of in the order you did, but you want to peel away. So I am going to save these pieces. I'll use these over again for the other one. Okay. And for the most part, if you put your, um, your tape down like one, two, three, four, it doesn't typically bleed too much. So you might end up with a pretty nice edge. And then you can also end it up with it's, you know, kind of like your arty edge. So... So this looks pretty cool. And what I think I'm going to do with this is actually I'm going to mat this just as it is onto um, black just to see. But what I want to do is I'll make sure this feels pretty cool. I'm going to take my adhesive remover and I'm just going to scrape it down. So now you could do this one of two ways where you could go ahead and color these exercisers in. Runners, joggers, whatever it is they're doing. They're playing tag. <laughs> just kidding. You can color them in, but it really gives you that nice break to be able to do the foreground. So it looks like they're running in the, you know, the backgrounds there and they're running into the foreground towards you. So if that were the case, what I have done thus far is I've done this with my um, Stampin' Blends. So you could certainly do that. So I'm just going to say this is Light Poppy Parade and Light Real Red. These two will work out pretty fine. So I'm just going to go ahead and bring these in. She has some really bright exercise shorts on. Bring that in a little bit, give it a little bit of shading and then kind of come back in. It does, these do react just a little bit differently than they do if you were using, um, um, with the watercolor paper versus the regular paper. Um, again, let's see. This is Mango Melody. Why not? You know, these these people definitely want to be seen when they're running. One other thing you definitely want to be careful, and I'm trying to think now. I'm wondering if this isn't maybe some of the case. But you do have to be careful when you're watercoloring versus when you want to use blends. And I'm thinking now that I might have done this. You cannot use blends with the stays on ink because they are both an alcohol ink and it will kind of make the edges bleed a little bit so if you notice that like on this one it is a little bit that direction it's probably because i used that and i shouldn't have so i'm going to bring in just a little bit of ivory here a little bit of ivory for the neck and the face funny thing one funny thing about these runners though they don't have uh they don't have any smiles on their faces you think they're exercising, they would be a little bit happier. Exercise is supposed to give you that kind of happy endorphin feel. I'm going to pretend like that's part of his shoe. A little bit of neck here. And I'm going to lighten this up just a little bit because it did make him just a tiny bit dark that it's only kind of masking the... the light kind of um the features I wanted to I should have gone with the ivory and then laid the bronze on top of it but I think it still looks good now they do obviously need some really cool shoes so I'm gonna give him some bright green shoes so that was dark call me clover and just a little bit and I'm gonna kind of blend it out with a light call me clover which is really cool um she is going to have some Keeping with her theme, really orange shoes. So that is light pumpkin pie. And then a little bit of dark pumpkin pie. And I'm feeling like he needs some blue because he looks like he would look really good in blue. So I'm going to put him in a blue top. 
and I believe this is balmy blue. Get out the dark one. I'm just going to kind of add in the crease here. I think I forgot just a little bit. So that's one other thing. I did talk about this yesterday. Sometimes when you're stamping these images, it's kind of hard to tell exactly where you want to fill in the color, like if they are, aren't in the right spot. And right here, I'm noticing two little spots in his arm that I kind of missed. So I'm going to go in with a really, really light. I feel like this is, yep, light daffodil delight. And I'm just going to kind of fill in the color behind him and a teeny bit up to her because I probably didn't do my best job masking. So just to make it look um, a little bit nicer. And then I'm going to add in some green a little bit of green with his shorts and that was light old olive and I'm gonna go with what is this one no nope, that's the same I'm gonna do dark granny apple green there's dark granny apple green and I'm just gonna round it out again with just a little bit of light old olive there you go so Again, very simple to color that in. However, you do want to make sure that you are careful what ink you choose when you're using your blends. So when you're using your blends, you do not want to use stays on. You want to use stays on for water coloring, however, okay? But when you use your blends, you want to use memento because these, this and this, these are both alcohol and they don't work as well together. It works much better with memento. However, you can't really watercolor with memento because it will bleed. So don't color in your stuff necessarily with your Stampin' Blends if you've watercolored the background because they're probably not going to mix so much. So I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to make this more of like a wash. So this is going to be very similar to what was in the... Um, and actually, I'm not even going to tape this one down just to kind of make it work a little better. This is going to be similar to what was in the catalog. So let me move this over. So what I'm going to do... And I'm just going to put this on the side. Is I'm going to just kind of pre-wet these areas. And I'm going to turn my heat tool on. That way I have it ready to use when I'm ready. And I'm going to take my, this is my bigger aqua painter. And I'm just going to wet the area that I want blue. So I'm going to kind of try to do one at a time. Now it's not soaking wet, but it's pretty wet. And then I'm going to make a puddle again with my blueberry bushel and I'm going to just kind of drop this in and you can see so when you do this so you have your color and you can kind of let it bleed down if you move your water around it will bleed to wherever you tilt it so that's one kind of cool thing you definitely want to have this on some sort of a hard board but since I don't didn't have that ready I would like to at least be able to show you guys what I meant and then you can always bring in some dark for the water. So there's that. I'm going to show you one other thing you can do. So you can pick this up with a paper towel. I just happen to have a little piece of one here I can use. So if you don't like the way something turns out, you can kind of hold your paper towel up to it. It'll sop up a little bit of the extra. You can press it to pick up some of the color if you wanted to. Okay, and then I'm going to hit this finally just with my heat tool. You also can move the water around with your heat tool. So if you kind of want it to go a certain direction and you have a puddle, you can kind of direct it with your heat tool. But again, if you do tape this down, as you can see it's curling a little bit, it'll stay a lot nicer and straighter. So there's one. And now I'm going to come up here and I'm going to give a big... Make sure that's clean. A big flush to this here. Has a little bit of blue tint in it. I probably should have cleaned that out just a little bit more. I'm going to pick up some of my pineapple punch. Just tap this in. And I think because I had a teeny bit of blue in there, it kind of made this like a, almost like a lemon lime color. And since that is the case, just because I don't want this to end up back in my um, stamp pad, I'm just going to pick up the rest of this residual color with my 
little towel here, okay? It's not leaving any lint there, so we'll just close that up. So as you can see, you can kind of move this around. So I'm gonna show you what I meant on this one. So I'm gonna crank up the heat tool, and you can see, I think you can, there's a lot of liquid there. So what you can do is you can kind of move the liquid around, as you see, it'll move around until it dries up. You can kind of direct it where you want it to go. So if you're able to do it, and kind of take your time with it, but keep it at that end. We should have a really intense color at this point here. It does take a little bit to get absorbed into the paper, but you'll kind of end with like, almost like if you were to imagine a, a puddle of salt, but it's gonna be like a concentration of the hue. However, no matter how you blow, unless you really got close to it, it is not going to leave the area that is wet. It's going to stay in the wet area. It will not go to the dry area unless you really push it. And I mean, you really would have to push it. So there it is. Pretty dry. So as you can see there, this is a teeny wet spot right here. None of it went past that rim where there was no water. So it's still perfectly white there. All right, so for the last one, we'll just bring in some of the Call Me Clover. So I'm just gonna take my brush again, make sure it's dripping wet, and just kind of spread some of that clean water around. If you're worried also about the fact of whether you are or aren't gonna have clean water, another thing you can do is instead of putting water in here, you could fill a glass with water and dip into it. That way you can make sure your brush is clean every time. So that's also another good way to do it. So I'm just gonna bring this in. Just kind of flooding the area with the green. If you have a spot that you didn't necessarily get wet, you could always move it over. Okay, but just remember, if anything is wet, so wet, and if you go over to here with this wet, they are going to merge. Because anything that has water on it, the color is going to go to that area, okay? So I'm going to take, I'm going to set this here just for the sake of trying to make it just a little bit neater in case I have to blow. I'm going to turn this up once more. And now when I'm blowing, because we went to the edge of the paper, it will come off the edge, but it's still not crossing the line over here where we didn't wet it actively. Another way you could do this too, except still you would have the color on the inside is by um, heat embossing the um, athletes in white or in clear heat embossing onto this watercolor paper. But the center of them still wouldn't be masked. So the bikes, the bikes, uh, the wheels of the bike and everything. You would kind of get a similar effect. Only thing is their color on their clothes would still be coming through. It wouldn't be white, which is what we're doing. Make sure I got the edge. All right, that looks pretty good. It's mostly, mostly dry. You move these over. Oops. And again, just make sure, the most important thing you do is make sure that you don't leave water in your aqua painter because trust me, from experience, it gets really stinky and you don't want that. So I'm just gonna take my adhesive brush one more time, or my adhesive, I guess it's an eraser, remover, and I'm gonna just peel this off. So then what we can do Instead of coloring these all in, specifically not with the blends, what we'll do is we can just kind of make like a highlighted part. So like for every person here, what we'll do is we'll use a shock of red. So kind of bring something to them and unite them all together. We'll bring a little bit of red. So let's see. So we are able to remove all that. You can see it's completely clear, which is really cool. That's the one thing about the masking um, fluid. It's very easy to get off. You just rub it, rub it to get it off. It's pretty simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, 
I think I'm going to go with Poppy Parade because that's red but not too red. But at the same time, I'm going to use my little, my bottom here. So I'm just pushing in the center to get a ink spot. And I'm going to use my smaller brush. I'm going to make sure it's nice and clean. And I'm just going to bring just a little bit. And I'm going to make his swim cap red. Okay. And we will do the shorts red. Okay. And how about we'll do the guy coming up for the back? So not this one so they're not right next to each other. We'll do his shirt and helmet red. Just like that. So to give like a little bit of something, like you see the same person swimming, running, biking. I guess is kind of what I'm trying to go with here. So I just did that in Poppy Parade. You could certainly do it in red as well, but there, we're going to do that. So then we're going to just finish these two cards. So again, these look different. This one we did as a dry color and it basically added in and we also masked this off. This one is going to be a little bit wobblier because we didn't tape it down, but you could totally do that as well. I just didn't want to tape, especially because I had this little guy hanging here on the end and the way I laid these out, they weren't really exactly as I planned. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some basic black. Let's see if we have a couple scrappy pieces that might work. There's one. Oh, this one piece will do it for both of them. That's even better. And then we'll do a bright color as their kind of background piece. So this one, let's see if I have enough space on my trimmer here. This one should, I think this was three by four. Yep. So I'm going to trim this down to four. Let's see if I can do four and a quarter. Let's see if we can do three and a quarter. Oh, that's almost perfect. I'm going to take off just a teeny bit just so I make sure it's straight. So there's one. And then this one was, this one might be a little bit too long. Yeah, this one's a little bit too long for this trimmer. I feel like this was four and a quarter. And I want to make it four and a half. Let's see. I'm going to flip it over so it's a little easier. So that is four and a half by three. So we're going to go with three and a quarter by four and three quarters. Oh, that piece is crooked. Four and three quarters by three and a quarter. Let's see what that looks like. There we go. And if you don't like just the focal image of the one red thing going through there, you could absolutely color in the rest of them. You could even do the rest of them like they were gray, like the rest of the thing kind of didn't stand out quite as much. But whichever it is you want to do. I will tell you one thing. When you are using um, watercolor paper, especially because if you didn't tape it down and it got that curl to it with the, you know, the curl, you definitely want to make sure that you really adhere it. Sometimes with the curl, the tear and tape or whatever other adhesive will not really pick up as well. So I kind of do both. But I would definitely put this together and either you could run this through with your big shot um, just with the acrylic plate and put it in between a piece of copy paper will make it nice and flat. Another thing you could do if you don't have one, don't have that or you don't have the time for that is you could set some um, punches on top of it, something with a little bit of weight to kind of hold it down. So you could do that as well. But give that just a second. I'm just going to tuck that under here in the reverse. Do the same with this one. Yeah, this one isn't liking. I always forget that. Watercolor paper and uh, tear and tape don't really mix very well. Snail is a little bit difficult as well because just with the bendy portion of it, it just doesn't seem to pick it up as much with the groove. So we're going to put that there. All right. I'm going to hold that for a second. And then what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to back these both onto... I don't know if I want to do blueberry bushel or I'm going to do pineapple punch because that I think is really going to make that part of it pop. So let me grab a piece of pineapple punch and I'm going to take my full sheet of cardstock here. I'm going to score it at four and a quarter and cut it at five and a half. 
two pieces and we'll add some sort of a little sentiment on here. Thank you again for sticking with me. I know this is a rather long video, but it definitely does have some kind of long-winded techniques. And I also wanted to be able to explain it in a way that it would make sense. And also, I went step by step without any distraction. That's why I decided to do it not as a Facebook or a YouTube Live. But I am happy to answer any questions if you have any. You can either leave me a comment, you can send me an email at rachthestamper at gmail.com. Happy to help you out. Again, I got um, my boards, the hard boards. This would be kind of cool, look like a photograph. I'm going to put this a little sideways so it kind of looks like somebody took a, a snapshot while they were running. And this one I may end up going back and filling in um, a little bit more. So stay tuned. Make sure you check over to the blog to see the picture for that because I might en end up going back and sw switching that up just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add two pretty simple sentiments to this. So believe you can. And it's kind of fun to do the impossible. I'm going to do Believe You Can for these guys here. And then the impossible is going to be for this one. So grab these two sentiments. I actually honestly got this stamp set because it has a swimmer in it. And I was a competitive swimmer for many years. And because of the, it's kind of fun to do the impossible. I love that sentiment. Really, really cool. Again, love it reminds me of walt disney walt disney world so i'm just going to stamp this kind of here on the top hopefully making that somewhat straight and that'll be there let me see where my other little you know i had another long strip here yep all right so same thing i'm going to keep this out and then kind of fun to do the impossible i'm going to do that on this little strip and we'll add that to it so I'm just inking this again in Memento ink. Awesome. And then, let's see if I can get all these things out of the way without having a catastrophe or a craft catastrophe. Is I'm going to trim this off. This little uh, mini guillotine trimmer comes in super duper handy. That'll be just enough that we can pop that on. And I'm going to trim this up just a smidgy so it's a little bit closer. And I'm going to trim just a little bit off the end. And of course it's a little teeny bit crooked, but that's okay. I'm going to leave it. No biggie. And I'm going to layer this. I would love, I might have to put this across the top. Actually, I might end up trimming this up just a teeny bit so it fits a little better. So I'm going to go scissors. I'm going to go rogue here with my scissors and trim this just, I'm trying to catch the end of it there. You certainly don't have to do this. You could make it so yours is actually straight. And I just want to bring it a little bit tighter so it doesn't take up the whole picture. Since it is rather long. You could also break it up into little pieces. So that's another idea for you to do is to break it. It's kind of fun. And then you could put that to do the impossible at the bottom. So that's another cool thing you could do. So I'm just going to add a little bit of adhesive to the back of both of these. And that will wrap up our card. This one you could even pop up on uh, dimensional. Would be kind of fun. Might be a good idea. Might have to pull that apart and do that. But thank you guys very much for joining me today. I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you'd like to get any of these supplies, you can shop them in my online store, which is reachthestamper.stampinup.net. Thank you so much for taking time to hang out with me today. I hope you have learned something useful. I am always looking for comments, critiques, criticisms, any suggestions you have for videos or ideas. I am always open to new ideas. You can follow me along at reachthestamper.com. You'll find all the measurements and everything that I use for these products here. 
And if you're watching this, I would love for you to give me a thumbs up, share this with somebody that you think would appreciate it, or leave me a comment. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day.